This is the brand new Anker Solix F3000. It's the little brother to the F3800 and F3800 Plus. Now what's cool about this is that this is actually a pretty small package and it can still take in a pretty significant amount of solar. So our goal today is to max out the solar PV input on this as much as we possibly can. We've got a six kilowatt array. This is 12 550 watt panels. And I'm gonna show you the best way to connect these to the F3000 and be able to make sure that we don't exceed the voltage ranges of our two different inputs. We have a high PV input and a low PV input. I'd say it weighs about 80 pounds. A super quick overview of the ports we have. We have a TT30 port, that's gonna be for like your RVs, 420 volt standard receptacles. And then over here, we have two different DC ports both a standard 12 volt socket and an Anderson power pole, which is unique. I haven't seen that on very many anchor power stations before. And then right there, you can see we've got two USB-Cs. Coming around the end here, we've got this port. This is for our AC in and also out. They have a device coming out that's gonna mimic or work similarly to the home power panel in being able to do some AC coupling and then be able to offset uh, some of the cost of this unit with solar, which is really cool. Then down here we've got a generator port, which I'm guessing is gonna be for an inverter generator or of, of some sort uh, from Anchor, as well as our expansion port right there for additional batteries. And then coming around the back is where we have our PV inputs. We've got two different options here, our low PV, which is up to 60 volts, 11 to 60, 17 amps on an XT60 as well as our high PV, which is 11 to 165 volts, 17 amps max. This is a proprietary connector uh, that Anchor has come up with. I think it's actually pretty well designed. Now, since we can bring in up to 165 volts, we can actually connect multiple panels in series instead of just doing them in parallel. So Ole's getting some cables ready over there, and we're gonna connect three of these panels in series, and that'll give us about 150 volts. The way you figure that out is by looking on the back of the panel. Whatever panel you have, there should be a spot somewhere where the specifications are written. And so you can see on this one right here, our volt open circuit is 50 volts at standard test conditions, which it's a mild day here in Minnesota. If it was colder out, you might need to take into consideration that these panels will be a higher voltage at a lower temperature. So you have to do the math on that. We're not gonna go into detail on that today, but we're gonna do three in series, and then that set can connect to that port. And then we're gonna do another really interesting thing after that, and do two series, two parallel, but we don't wanna get ahead of ourselves too much. So let's go ahead and get these first three done in series. So I'm gonna take the end of this first cable over to here and connect it onto this first panel. These two are already connected. These two are already connected. Now I actually have to disconnect this one because we had a six panel series the other day. And now we'll take a second extension cable. So with these three panels right here, we should have about 150 volts. Now this does have a handle that deploys out of it, which is kind of handy. What do we got? PV input, 11 volts through 165 volts, 17 amps max, 1600 watts. So 1600 watts on the high PV. Low PV input, 11 through 60 volts, 17 amps max, 800 watts. 800 watts. So right here is our adapter from our proprietary anchor connector. Now it's actually best if we don't connect this yet, we wanna connect the other side of our MC4 or solar connectors to our series of three panels first. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, uh, since this is 150, 50 volts, we're well underneath that 165 limit, but you definitely want to abide by that. And we could use an electrical tester to see what voltages are at. I just did that yesterday, so I'm not concerned about doing that right now. Uh, so we should be good to go. Now we can go ahead and connect our proprietary connector here to the F3000. One cool thing about this is that when you press this button right here, it actually uh, tells the power station to stop charging. So when you go to disconnect it, it will stop the current flow when you press that button instead of just pulling it apart while there is current still flowing. 
So we're gonna see if this thing recognizes our input here and see how many watts we're able to get. So we're currently pulling a thousand watts already from those three panels. Now it's somewhat of an overcast day here in Minnesota. So in order to get this up to the maximum input, we're gonna to have to add some additional panels. Now we can't add any additional panels in series. If we did that, we would fry our brand new F3000. But we can do two series, two parallel. All right, so Oli's gonna push the button right back here and I'll show you guys how it disconnects from the thing. So just push the button down. Yeah, you heard that click? And it stopped charging before you even pulled it out, right? Yeah, so now you, can, now you can go ahead and pull it out. All right, we're gonna rig up our 2S2P now. Well, this is gonna really max it out. Okay, so here we've got our wires coming from our first series string over there. So three panels. There's three panels connected to these. In and then these series. over here are the ones that we just disconnected. We're gonna have to change up our connectors here a little bit. And this is for the other three panels. So we're gonna have a total of six panels connected in parallel. So now these two ends connect to our adapter. It is possible to mess this up. So if you're not paying attention and you accidentally plug the two ends of your series together, you'll be dead shorting your panels. It probably won't destroy them, um, but it's not good for them. Let's go ahead and plug this in. This should be 2S, 2P. Here we go. So we should be able to get our full solar input now based on this connection. Oh yeah, look at that. What's the max? 1600 watts is our max. And right now we are at 1594. I think it's maxing out at that. I think yeah. the panels could go higher. The panels could, could put out more than that, but this is as much as this is able to take in. So that's fantastic. Now the cool thing is we still have one more input that we can work with. So right here we've got our low PV. We're gonna now connect one solar panel to this. So here we've got an XT60 to MC4 adapter or solar connector. This is gonna be uh, just a single 550 watt panel. As we talked about earlier, it's 50 volts open circuit. So we're totally safe to connect this to our max 60 volt input. And we should be able to add probably another three or 400 watts based on our current sunlight. Yeah, we're up to 1,900 watts, almost 2,000 watts. And we also need to start bleeding off some of our energy. We're gonna start charging the Tesla. Now, one interesting thing about the Tesla charger is that it's not gonna work unless there's a bonded neutral and ground. Now, thankfully, there's a way that we can fix that really easily. What do you got there, Oli? A plug, the cord what? got cut off. It bonds the neutral and the ground together. Since this is an ungrounded system, um, this is totally fine to do. We're not violating any principles except we're just creating a neutral to ground bond. Now the light on our charger should switch to being green. Yep, there it is. Push it in really firm. Now I did also want to show you that there is an EV charging mode built into the F3000 and the way it works is it bonds the neutral and ground just like that little plug does. And the way we enable that feature is to double press right here instead of just a single press on the AC outlet. So we're gonna double click. So you can see right there on the display that it does show the little picture of a vehicle and the 60 hertz at the same time. Now, interestingly, these 20 amp receptacles are disabled in EV charging mode. So only the TT30, this is a 30 amp 120 volt uh, receptacle, that's the only one that's actually enabled in this mode. So I don't have an EV charger that goes directly onto that. So we're gonna have to use this adapter, which is a TT30 to a 515. This is technically only a 15 amp, 120 volt uh, receptacle. And then we can connect our EV charger to that. I do want to get an actual adapter that goes straight from here to the, the Tesla mobile connector. Uh, because then we could take advantage of that 30 amps instead of only drawing 15 amps um, at 80% 80, 80 of that. So it's actually only going to draw about 1300 watts. Just about 1350 is all that it's going to draw. But you can see that that neutral and ground did bond correctly because it's charging and showing that green indicator. So EV charging mode is awesome to have. It's just not for the 20 amp receptacles uh, right there. It's only for the TT30. 
So we're gonna try to parallel one more panel into the XT60. All right, we found the adapter I was looking for. As you can see, it's an XT60 splitter. This is actually a really cool cord, but I think they've stopped making and selling them because it, it is sort of hazardous. Uh, technically, these ends of the XT60 ports uh, are exposed, and so you could touch them and potentially be exposed to whatever voltage is being fed into this adapter. Now, if you're just doing a single panel, that's only going to be you know up to 50 volts in this case. Uh, but if you did have a series and you inadvertently connect that connected that to here, you would have some hazardous voltage uh, that's easily touchable. So. That's why this is no longer available, but we've got one, so we're gonna put it to use. So compared to the XT60 that has those contact points, you know, I was mentioning on this splitter that it's really easy to touch these live terminals, but even on the male side, there's still not that much distance between the outside of this connector here and the brass pins inside of the brass sleeves. So that has been improved dramatically with the new anchor connector. Uh, when we press this down, it disconnects the current flow. And then if we take a look at this, this would have 160 volts on it or so. Uh, there's no way for us to touch these pins inside of here. And it's actually pretty far back in there where the actual contact points are located. So we're going to parallel actually three panels, three individual panels through this connector right here in hopes that we can actually still max out our low PV up to that 800 watts. We're also going to add a third set of three panels to our high PV. So actually, we're gonna use all 12 of these panels connected to the single F3000 to see if we can truly max out its solar performance. Well, it is the next morning and we are back out at the array. What are we bringing in, Oli? Uh, 2337. 2337, and that is pretty amazing for this unit. I think that's, I think we can safely say that's maxed out. 2400 is the yeah. max and we're pulling in 2340 almost. Now one kind of annoying thing about portable power stations historically is that if you want to charge them from an AC outlet, you actually usually only can do that with a 120 volt standard 15 amp plug. Now with the F3000, we don't have a standard style input like what we see right here. This is what most power stations use. This actually has a custom connector that allows us to do a bunch of different things. You can see this is this has communication abilities and they actually have a smart panel that's going to be coming out that works similarly to the F3800 Plus and the home power panel. It's different but it can do a similar thing. So with this, uh, the cord that's included is a standard 120 volt 15 amp receptacle right here. Uh, so this can charge at a max rate of 1800 watts. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. However, there are multiple different things that we can connect here. And one of them is this one right here. Go ahead and plug it in. This is a TT30 plug. So this is a 30 amp 120 volt input. They also have an EV charger cord so that you can use a standard EV charger. A level 2 charger and charge it with that, which I'm curious to try that at some point in time. I don't have that cable currently, but that's something that's supposed to be coming out. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and see if we can put the maximum current into this unit using our TT30 plug. We should be able to get 30 amps or uh, 3600 watts, I think is the actual limit. So we're going to take this outside and put it with our inverter generator and see how much electricity we are able to put into this unit. Now I know I have this set to only pull in a few hundred watts right now, so we'll have to change that on the app. But we'll go ahead and get it plugged in so it can get started at least. Oh, never mind. It is ramping up right away. I guess it's because it's a different type of cord. Oh my goodness, we're already up to 3,600 watts. 3,590. So this inverter generator right here is pretty much the perfect match for the F3000. Its continuous output on gasoline is 3,700 watts. And then we have a true 3,601 watts right now. So we go down here to devices. We can see right there we've got our F3000, 38% charged already. 
and says we've got 36 minutes remaining until full charge and our AC input right there of basically 3600 watts. That's really impressive. So this actually can make a pretty big difference in your flow of using this in an outage because a lot of times you have to recharge your batteries and if you can only do it at 1800 watts it's going to take a lot longer than when you can do this at 36. So that's pretty great. Let's look in the settings right here. You can see that we still have the option of changing how much current uh, we bring into the unit. And uh, remember how I was saying I have this set to a lower number? The default AC charging power, it obviously can tell which cord is connected because I had this cranked all the way down to 400 watts. So I was expecting it to do that at first, but actually it's doing the full 3600 watts because it has the 30 amp charge port cord connected and it recognized that. And then we've got an EV converter port charging power. You can use the EV connector port to connect to a device that supports EV charging and then charge your F3000. So that's pretty cool. I definitely want to try that out if I ever get the opportunity. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and just play with this wattage here. Let's just drop it down. We can probably hear the, hear the generator change sounds. Let's go all the way down to 1800 watts. That would be our typical wall charging rate. Yep, we can hear the generator spool down. I think that gives you a pretty good breakdown of what the F3000 is capable of. The things I especially like about it are its ability to take in quite a lot of solar as we were able to test. That is pretty nice. The smaller the unit and the more solar you can get into it, the better. And then I also like that they've made it so we can charge at a higher rate with an AC charging source because oftentimes it's limited to that 1800 watts which is a pretty big bottleneck if you're trying to just refill the battery so that you can get back out to where you need the power. That can be a pain and historically it seems like it's been the case that you end up with being able to charge faster with solar than you do with alternating current and I think that it's better overall if you can charge fast with both. Let me know what you think about the F3000 in the comment section below. If you guys are interested in this product, be sure to check the links out, and we'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.